Chief Judge for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, Major General Nikitchenko. His Deputy, Lieutenant Colonel Volchkov. Chief Judge for the United Kingdom, Lord Justice Lawrence. His Deputy, Sir Norman Burkett. Chief Judge for the United States of America, Francis Biddle. His Deputy, Parker. Chief Judge for the Republic of France, de Fabre. His Deputy, Falco. The court is presided over by Lord Justice Lawrence. Among the distinguished visitors, Vyshinsky, Deputy Foreign Minister of the USSR, and Goshenin, Soviet Prosecutor General. Hermann Goering. Hitler's close friend, formerly known as the second man in the Reich. He is much thinner and shrunken now. Goering looked a different man at the height of his power. He was sleek and obese then. It was his airmen that bombed Warsaw, Leningrad and London. Goering was the founder of the notorious Gestapo. He helped to draw up and carry out the plan of attack on the USSR. Goering is criminal number one. Rudolf Hess, leader of the Nazi party and Hitler's deputy. He summoned the Germans to prepare for war. Guns instead of butter, he cried. Joachim von Ribbentrop, Reich's Minister for Foreign Affairs. With the cunning of a fox, he was a past master in international intrigue. He was always ready to vow eternal friendship, but there was not a vow he did not violate, nor a nation he did not betray and betray again. He was the right and left hand of the warmongers. Wilhelm Keitel, commander of Germany's armed forces. I am just a soldier, he says, trying to disavow his guilt. But this is not the face of a soldier. It's the face of a hangman and butcher. His uniform is stained with the blood of disarmed and defenseless people. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, chief of the security police and the SD. He is responsible for the gas chambers and gas wagons, the death factories and the concentration camps. On his conscience is the blood of thousands and thousands of innocent people tortured to death and buried alive in the Ukraine, Belarusia, and the Baltic states. Alfred Rosenberg, the author of the race theory, which was to drench Europe in blood. He drew up the plan for the division of the USSR. Then he was made minister of the Ostland, and by his orders, Poland, the Ukraine, Belarusia, and the Caucasus were ravaged and plundered and put to fire and sword. The Superman, is nervous now. Hans Frank, the cynical butcher of Poland. He called Poland a booty land. He said the country must be reduced to a pile of ruins. Poles and Ukrainians must be turned into mincemeat. And as to the Jew, they must be destroyed, every one of them. Wilhelm Frick, Reich's Minister of the Interior and protector of Bohemia and Moravia, a snarling, vicious jackal, now caught by the tail and locked in a cage. Julia Streicher, editor of the Sturmer, one of the vilest new sheets in the world. Jew Beta, preacher of anti-Semitism, corrupter of youth. He proudly called himself Jew Hater Number One. Walter Funk, he was one of Germany's economic bosses. He supplied the means to run Hitler's marauding war. And the war supplied the means to line the pockets of Funk, Krupp, and the other German bankers and industrialists. Hjalmar Schacht. He directed the finances and the economy of the piratical Nazi state. Grand Admiral Dernick chieftain of the Nazi pirates. His wolf packs sunk unarmed ships and neutral vessels without warning. When Hitler saw that the game was up, he entrusted Dönitz with the task of saving the Nazi ship. But the ship went to the bottom. 
And Dönitz is now in the prisoner's dock. Erich Rieder. He and Hitler conceived the idea of wiping Leningrad off the face of the earth. They failed. But the grief and suffering of Leningrad, its blood and sacrifices, call for expiation. Baldur von Schirach. His ideal was, we will raise up the youths of Germany to be cruel and ruthless. The whole world will tremble before them. I want to see the glint of the wild beast in their eyes. Fritz Zaukel, the slave trader. Girls of the Ukraine, youths of France, children of Czechoslovakia. Look at him now. It was he that drove you like cattle to the slave markets of Germany. Alfred Jodl, Hitler's military advisor, bloodthirsty and ruthless, and an implacable foe of the Soviet people. The Russians should be hanged, head downwards, he said. The world will not breathe freely until he is hanging head downwards. Franz von Papen, as vain as a peacock, a master of espionage, sabotage, and intrigue. It was he that put Germany into Hitler's hands. Arthur Zeiss Inquart, butcher of Poland, Austria, and the Netherlands. Albert Speer, Reich's Minister of Armaments. In Speer's underground munition factories, thousands upon thousands of men and women toiled and slaved until they grew blind, died of exhaustion, or pined away. Konstantin von Neurath, Nazi diplomat with the rank of a general of the SS, butcher of Czechoslovakia. Hans Fritzsche. Goebbels' assistant, who, like him, poisoned the mines with a venom of lies and calumnies. The American prosecutor said, if these men are to be declared innocent, then there was no war, no massacres, and no crimes. The British prosecutor said, they slaughtered 12 million people. For such a crime, they might, with every justice, have been executed without trial or investigation. The French prosecutor said, when messieurs the judges retired to consider their verdict, they must, in their silent deliberations, hearken to the blood of the innocent, crying for retribution. The Soviet prosecutor said, I appeal to the court to pronounce on all the accused without exception the supreme penalty, death. Such a verdict will be hailed with satisfaction by all progressive mankind. 